In this video, I'm going to be documenting the breeding process of my L333 King Tiger black and white plecos. So this definitely isn't a tutorial. I'm more just kind of documenting the process step by step of what's going on while they're breeding. Uh, but at some point, I may release a tutorial. So here is the first step right here. I just noticed on this date that they are trapping. This is the male in the back and the female is in the front. And it's kind of interesting. I have four caves in this tank, one cave for each of the adult L333s. Now I've determined that I'm pretty sure three of them are male and there's only one female. They've bred for me two or three times and it seems to always be the same one fish breeding uh, as far as the female goes. So I think there's just one female and some of the males sometimes take turns. But what I noticed was the female did not come to the male's cave um, like I see with bristlenose plecos often, uh, and I believe I've seen with my L33s in the past, but the male actually came to the female's cave, and he trapped her in her own cave. Uh, this might just be because I have so many caves that they each have their own cave, um, and the female just decided to hang out in her cave until the male was uh, noticed her. But yeah, so the female has now been trapped. All right, so that was four days of trapping behavior, and the female has finally laid the eggs, which I'm hoping the father has fertilized. He now has ownership of the cave, and he's guarding the eggs. He's kicked out the female, who's now just sitting on the log above the cave. So it's been a week since I last spoke to you, and I now can see little wigglers in the cave. The eggs have begun to hatch. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to go and transfer these wigglers over to a little floating breeder box. Uh, I typically do this with all my plecos um, just because it helps keep the plecos in an organized place so that they're not running around in the tank and you don't have to siphon them up with a hose uh, and look far and wide to catch them. Um, and as you can see, uh, I did kind of find out that there were wigglers because I did see a dead one outside of the cave and I do always wonder if they fare better um, free roaming around the tank when they're first born or if they fare better uh, sitting inside the breeder box but whatever the case I am going to transfer them right now. So what you see right here is my little floating breeder box and I just take the cave and I just kind of swish water in and out of it. Um, the father really has himself anchored in there so he's not going to come out but you see the first little wiggler fell out right there the babies cannot really anchor themselves in well so they will come out uh after you kind of gently uh swish water in and out and it doesn't really hurt them or do anything it's just kind of like a the water movement in a river and as you can see here this might have been slightly premature because not all the eggs have hatched but the fact that like half of them have hatched indicates that the rest of these will probably hatch overnight so I'm probably safe on fungus growing and anything else and that's the biggest thing you don't want to remove the eggs the second they're laid because the parent the father the the father pleco will actually clean off the eggs he'll clean uh, fungus off them he'll keep his fins moving to keep water moving in and out the fathers actually do a really good job of keeping the eggs clean when you separate the eggs from the father a lot of times they develop fungus um, unless you treat them, which is a pain in the butt. So separate them only once the fry have begun hatching, like this situation right here. And I just use the flashlight on my phone to take a peek inside the cave to make sure that all of the little wigglers and the eggs are out. So I'm not sure on the exact numbers. Somebody, if anybody has any technical information, feel free to comment it on how many eggs L333s typically lay. Like I said, this is probably my fourth, maybe my fifth batch of eggs and fry. Uh, but I've definitely found that it's significantly less than uh, bristlenose plecos where you might get, you know, batches of 50, maybe even batches of 100 for really mature females. But the most I've seen here, I believe this batch is somewhere between 10 to 15. I didn't count them quite yet. I know my last batch that I had, I had 12 that survived uh, beyond the fry stage. So smaller batches, but still very fun and exciting. All right, so it's one day later, not a whole lot of progress to report here. It looks like I did have maybe one egg that didn't make it, that didn't survive. You can see it kind of covered in fungus. 
Um, it looks like it did hatch, but maybe the fry uh, just didn't survive very long. But it looks like I do have 15 little wigglers in here. Now you can see their yolk sacs are still very large. Um, the yolk sacs on these guys are much larger than the bristlenose plecos. Um, and they seem to last a little bit longer, uh, probably because of their size. They just take a bit longer to consume. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I haven't actually really timed it out in comparison. Um, they don't need to eat yet because they are working off those yolk sacs. I just throw a little piece of wood in there for them to hide around uh, should they feel vulnerable and unprotected. Uh, but not a whole lot going on just yet. So it's now two days since my last update, three days since they hatched, and the yolk sacs have been absorbed a little bit more. Um, they kind of take on less of an orb shape and more of a torpedo shape underneath their body until they're fully absorbed. Uh, you can see everybody's just kind of hanging together in one big group. Uh, not a whole ton to report yet. It's January 19th now, four days since they hatched, one day since my last update. And you can see they do still have some yolk sacs on them. I didn't mean to drop pellets into this little breeder box. Um, I was feeding all my tanks and I did it by mistake thinking it was one of the other breeder boxes I have right now. So I kind of just left the food in there, but I don't anticipate they're really going to eat it. Uh, and I wanted to show you down here too. This is what it looked like just before these two spawned. The male was hiding upside down on the log um, above her cave. Her cave is the brown cave, and she would just sit in the cave all day. Now, I had no idea that this was coming, though, because he had been sitting under that log for a few months, um, and I don't know if it was in preparation of breeding or if it's just because he likes sitting in that spot, because as, as you can see, they finished breeding, and he went right back to the spot, so it might not be in preparation of breeding. He might just really like that spot, but I had no idea this was going to happen because that was the spot he always sits in, and then he just randomly came down one day, and they began the breeding process. All right, it's January 21st, two days later, and what's really cool is although they still have the yolk sacs, you can actually see their stripes coming in slightly. Um, I do have one little guy over here. I can't really tell if he's alive or not. Um, he might not make it, but he looks like he might still be alive. Uh, but the rest of them are going strong, and there's still not really any need to put any food in. As you can see, those pellets, I never ended up taking them out, and they did uh, kind of develop a fungus to them, so you should take out any uneaten food. Um, and let them absorb their yolk sacs. Alright, it's now January 27th. I waited nearly an entire week, six days, to do this next update here, and their yolk sacs are all but gone. Uh, they do have their stripes uh, almost fully in now, and they're moving around a lot more. They look like they're just about getting ready to that point where I might start uh, feeding them in very, very small quantities, maybe breaking up some of my carnivore pellets or using some smaller fry foods. So at this point, I am now gonna move them to the empty 10 gallon tank I have set up for them. Um, they will need some more space when they start to get larger than an inch, an inch and a half, but right now, uh, 10 gallons uh, with the filtration and the water change schedule that I have is gonna be plenty of space for them. Uh, and at this size, I probably won't even see them in the 10 gallon tank for weeks at a time because they're so small, they'll just hide under the sponge filter all day long. The date is now February 4th. It's been eight days since my previous update, and this is going to be my final update. They're in the 10 gallon tank. There is no sign of their yolk sac anymore. Their stripes look good. They are, as expected, hiding under the sponge filter all day long, so this is the best shot I could get of them. I throw in tiny, tiny quantities of food, and even that barely gets eaten just because they're so small right now. They're just kind of nibbling on the, on the food that I am putting in there, but now this is really the time that I call, and I don't like this term, but it's the only thing I can ever come up with, set it and forget it. And the only reason I say that, I'm not saying forget the fish, but you put them in this tank and now it's just grow out time. I, I can't really keep checking on them. This is a slower growing fish than bristlenose. So it might be six to nine months before I even have these at a size that I'm comfortable with selling them at. So. I drop them in there, I keep the tank nice and clean, I, take the, I keep the water quality good, I kept, keep them fed, uh, but when I say forget it, I, I, I mean I'm, I'm just not going to be looking in this tank every single day because um, they're going to be somewhat slow growing and they're not going to be the most interesting fish to look at because they're just going to hide under that sponge filter all day. So anyways, that's the L333 uh, King Tiger Pleco breeding process that I uh, just went through maybe for the fourth or fifth time in my Pleco breeding uh, history. 
I am branching out to different species. I did just get some L260. I am growing out a couple of albino L333s, which I'm very excited about, but it'll, it'll probably be a year to a year and a half before those are uh, ready for breeding, but I'm very excited about that because those are very, very rare uh, and hard to come by. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Pleco breeding videos just like this, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.